today, D.C. police are hitting the streets for enhanced enforcement of three drug-free zones in the city. The zones are in Chinatown, the Benning Road Northeast Corridor, and the Garfield Heights neighborhood in Southeast. And they're one of the more controversial pieces of D.C.'s new crime bill. News 4's Juliana Valencia joins us live from one of those zones in Chinatown this morning with more. Juliana? Hey, Millette, good morning. So take a look. When walking around Chinatown, you're going to see signs like this one that say it's a drug-free zone. You also have an increase of police presence and police handing out flyers like this one to let people know about it. The overall goal here, goal here is to cut down on crime. An increase of police presence in and around Chinatown. Officers patrolling in cars and bikes. Enhanced enforcement as part of D.C.'s new drug-free zones, a result of the newly passed crime bill. The way that the law is written, it provides uh, ample uh, protection. Um, for, for everyone. Thomas Lee is an ANC commissioner for Ward 2. He thinks the drug-free zones will make it better for neighbors and businesses in the area. I've heard uh, from the convention uh, that many of the convention organizers um, organize buses, you know, away from, uh, you know, uh, for their convention goers to, you know, visit other neighborhoods. Um, to avoid downtown just because they don't want their convention goers from all across the, you know, the country, all across the, you know, all the world to see, you know, to see drug, drug deals uh, taking place. Under this new law, once police give the council and certain other government agencies written notice, police then have the power to break up groups of two or more people if they are suspected of buying or selling illegal drugs. One area in particular that sees groups gather is the 7th and H entrance of the Gallery Place Metro. Howard Marks lives right by it. It's uh, distressing to see this uh, sale, open sale, this open air drug market that's right below our building. And it's sad because these are young people basically whose lives are being uh, ruined by, their, by these gateway drugs that are bought and sold. Jay Brown, who works for the nonprofit Community Shoulders, came here today to make people aware of the law. He's not for it. This is a dog and pony show. It's very performative and it's ineffective and it's only causing harm and it's targeting black and brown people, as you see, based on the locations that they chose to enforce these laws in. More has to be done. It has to be permanent. When you only have a five day limit, uh, these drug dealers are just going to go elsewhere and they'll come back after the five days is up. So what I testified in my written testimony. Juliana, uh, these drug-free zones are only temporary, only for five days. That gentleman was talking about that. Why is that? Well, well, it's all about the language in the bill, Millette. So those three uh, drug-free zones that were enacted today, they will expire on Tuesday. And the way the law is written, it says you can only have drug-free zones in the same area up to 10 days within a 30-day period. But, you know, this area, this metro um, entrance is usually does have those groups of people. Today, I only see the people headed to the arena for the ACC tournament. Juliana Valencia, live for us this morning. Thank you.